It is a region where the thermometer goes off the scale. It is the Arctic. In this part of the globe, temperatures are rising four times faster than in the rest of the world. And one of the reasons for this accelerated warming is precisely the disappearance of the ice pack. Here, the ice is melting rapidly, and the more it melts, the more the temperature increases, because water does not reflect the sun's rays as well as ice does. In Svalbard, a Norwegian group of islands in the heart of the Arctic Ocean, a team of French scientists has come to stay for a month. They will study the depressions that cross this region. A depression is a meteorological phenomenon of low atmospheric pressure. It is often associated with bad weather. But in the Arctic, it could play a role in rising temperatures. Arctic depressions have been less frequently observed over the last 50 years. And even after the end of the Second World War, while those from temperate latitudes have been far more frequent. This raises questions about how they develop. What are their interactions with clouds, and in particular, with the ice pack that we see here in blue? To study these depressions, the team brought in the ATR-42 a French scientific aircraft packed with sensors and measuring instruments, which will fly directly into the clouds. During its one-month mission, this essential aeroplane will bring back data that will be analyzed over the next five years. There are obviously instruments on the ground, quite a number of them, and there are even some in space. The difference is that when they're in space, they're on a satellite. They go over an area of interest very quickly, but they can't target a particular zone. On the ground, lots of instruments are available, but the problem is that they can't be moved just anywhere. You can't put them in the middle of the ocean, for example. It's very complicated, whereas with a plane, you can go to areas of interest and measure what's happening both above and below the aircraft. The mission takes off on its first flight. For nearly a month, the ATR-42 will fly at different altitudes, crossing depressions and going around them to take a maximum of measurements. On board, a handful of scientists will verify in real time that the instruments are working properly. We were lucky. We were able to sample four mature depressions off the Svalbard archipelago. Our goal was to get a better grasp of how they develop and deepen, and then how clouds interact with the Arctic depressions. To understand the composition of clouds, the team used two complementary instruments, radar and lidar. Back in France, the Latmos laboratory houses the scanners that were pointed through the windows of the cabin. They use radio waves. And here is the LiDAR. It works like radar, but using light. With the radar and LiDAR instruments of remote sensing, we are going to probe the atmosphere at a distance, not directly on the path of the aircraft, but up to 10 or 12 kilometers above and below it. So each instrument will potentially have different lines of sight to see either above, below, or even to the side of the aircraft. And when we pass through a cloud, we will be able to reconstitute it in 3D. The scientists are particularly interested in mixed-phase clouds, those that contain both liquid and frozen water. This state has a great influence on the way the clouds filter the sun's rays. But not only. When water changes state, this upsets the whole balance of the depression. What happens in the cloud is that water vapor transforms into liquid or solid water. And when the water changes phase, latent heat is released, which means that the temperature will rise locally. When it does, via the balance between wind and temperature, it will induce a modification of the winds and therefore the circulation of the Arctic depression. At the École Normale Supérieure, researchers are comparing the data collected with models provided by the French weather service Météo France. 
The upper areas in white exceed 30 meters per second, right? This type of survey makes it possible to improve and refine weather forecasts. We compare the data measured during the flight with that predicted by the model in this area of clouds, since that's where the radar that was on board the aircraft collected the wind information in our possession. So the difference we can actually observe is not so much related to the wind information, its amplitude inside the cloud, but rather the structure of the clouds themselves. There are dissimilarities, especially the zone with fewer clouds here, while the model features cloudy areas. These on-site measurements will make it possible to better anticipate tomorrow's climate. This crucial information will enable a better understanding of the meteorological phenomena that takes place in the Arctic, a breathtaking but so fragile part of the globe.